Good afternoon. Today we're going to take a look at another way of controlling stepper motors. In a previous video we discussed the sequencing of uh, controlling the stepper motor, where we would uh, uh, activate each of the phases in a specific sequence to get the stepper motor to rotate. Um, that is very impractical by today's standards. Uh, we uh, now are using uh, stepper motor drivers to do the sequencing for us and to provide uh, the power amplification necessary to drive the stepper motor. Uh, generically speaking, that category of stepper drives are called step and direction or pulse and direction stepper motor drivers. Um, what it means is uh, we give the command one pulse to the drive and it will index the motor. It'll take care of the micro stepping, the current control, and the amplification uh, uh, to deal with moving that motor. Uh, these stepper drives have evolved dramatically in the last 20 years or so and they take into account uh, electrical feedback from the motor to sense certain attributes that can have negative effects. Um, resonance being one of them. In the mid-ranges of some stepper motors, they will get into a resonant frequency and then they start skipping or losing steps, etc. So the drive technology is extremely advanced today uh, from the old uh, style I had showed you in the previous video with uh, where we just run uh, sequencing to activate the coils in order and just provide a, a very basic or rudimentary amplification. Uh, this is the circuit that we had for the last time uh, for that sequencing thing and it was a tiny little motor uh, Pico driving it and then this was the uh, sequencing and uh, amplifier. Uh, not a whole lot to it. It's crude, it's simple, it's primitive, um, and frankly I would look at it as really on the very bare minimalistic way of controlling a stepper motor. Uh, for all but the most smallest and most basic projects uh, I wouldn't use this uh, in other uh, projects and so forth. Now I'm going to get this guy out of the way. Uh, we'll put that up on that bench. And I'll bring this one in because this is part of a project that's coming up very, very soon. Uh, in fact, I hope to be filming it uh, perhaps even this weekend. Uh, let me just quickly explain what we've got here. Uh, there's the Pico doing the controlling a few uh, input devices to handle uh, how we want to control it. Um, this is actually the stepper drive, this little guy here. Uh, it's got a heat sink on it to dissipate heat. Here's a DC to DC power converter. And then the stepper motor. Now if you've got a 3D printer, you've got these stepper motors on your 3D printer. Uh, NEMA 17, it's the category, it's one of the smaller categories of uh, stepper motors. Very, very commonly used, especially uh, in printing and in, in 3D printing. Um, but when they're controlled by a very good or well-designed stepper driver, uh, they can be very accurate, and in this particular case, very quiet and efficiently operating. Uh, so, in this evolution here, this is actually a step and direction driver uh, with amplification and the ability to add what's called micro stepping. This particular motor has 200 steps per, rev per revolution naturally in it. So, it can make 200 steps in one rotation that we can easily control. But when we have a micro-stepping controller, we can break that 200 steps. We can break down each step into even smaller units, up to 256 smaller units. What that does is it gives you much smoother performance out of the stepper motor, 
much quieter performance out of the stepper motor, and to some degree, um, we'll call it greater resolution, dare I say, accuracy out of the stepper motor. Uh, but this small little drive right here has far more capability and performance than that sequencing unit we used the last time. Now, in industrial or more uh, heavy-duty applications, uh, stepper motors are sized accordingly, um, as are the drivers. Now, I'm going to pull up two more drives or stepper motors here. Kind of got to drag these into view. All right, that will be a NEMA 23. I think they would refer to this either as a double or a triple stack. Uh, this is a very high torque, high uh, performing stepper motor. Here is a NEMA 34 stepper motor, a uh, half inch shaft or about 13 millimeters. This one's quarter inch shaft or about 5.8 millimeters. Um, they both have about the same amount of torque in amperage requirements. Um, but in order to get good performance out of them, you need to back them up with a very good drive. The better the drive, generally the better performance you're going to get out of your motor. I'm going to get the big guy out of the way here. And we're just going to quickly take a look. Um, oh, and here's another tiny little stepper motor uh, that I wanted to include in this little sequence as well. This is a Mercury motor. You find these on uh, eBay and Amazon quite uh, inexpensively. Good for little things, uh, clocks, uh, little itty bitty moving things that don't require a lot of force. Um, when it comes to the drives, uh, this particular drive unit here, uh, I believe, is an obsolete drive. Uh, there's many like it. It's still available on eBay, Amazon, and so forth. Uh, with it, you can set uh, the micro-stepping from uh, full step up to 64 micro-steps. And then with the switches on here, you can set the amount of current from 0.9 up to 3 amps. I believe this particular drive can only handle um, probably in the neighborhood of 25 to 30 volts. Uh, and that's a limitation of uh, how much that can go into it. Stepper motors, you generally don't run them at the rated voltage unless you don't want to deal with uh, current limiting and so forth. You can get much better performance out of a motor if you run it over voltage, but you can never run over the current. If you put more current in it than it can handle, you're going to have troubles and the motor will fail prematurely. Uh, but with this one, it's a very economical drive, um, I believe made in China. Uh, goes under many different brand names. And it, it, in truth, it, it served me well on the CNC router that's out in the garage uh, that you see in other videos. This is another uh, set of uh, three stepper drives. Uh, Micro-stepping, I think they were 10 steps. I don't believe it was adjustable, but 10 steps. Uh, 10 micro steps. You specify the current limiting by putting in a different size resistor, which you see along here. Uh, they're very compact, as you see, and uh, they're bolted onto this aluminum extrusion as a heat sink. Worked uh, very effectively. Uh, but these are very high end, uh, industrial grade stepper drives, and they use step and direction input signals, as do this one and most of the other modern stepper drives that are available. Uh, so with that overview out of the way, we're going to take a look at controlling this motor uh, with our Pico and with this particular drive. Before I dive into the program, I did want to take a moment to talk about the wiring that's involved here. With our Pico, I'm connected uh, with, via USB back to Thani, or my PC and Thani. Um, these two wires here going to the stepper drive are just enable uh, pins. If they're pulled to zero volts, pulled to ground, that will enable the drive. These two pins provide the step and direction pulses. One is sending pulses at a very regular interval, 
The other is either high or low to make the motor run forward or reverse. We've got four motors or four wires leading into the motor. Uh, and this would be considered a bipolar motor. Uh, there are unipolar motors out there, but uh, very rare are they even used anymore. Bipolar is the modern standard. And then finally over here, I've got uh, 30 volts going into the unit uh, from my bench power supply. So that's essentially the wiring. I wasn't going to provide a schematic on this, uh, primarily because of the variances between uh, the drives, the motors, etc. It isn't really standardized per se. Uh, so with that, now let's take a look at the code here in Thani. Uh, in this first example that we're going to uh, use, we're going to uh, create the step pulses uh, using a dwell command between each step pulse. Uh, so if that pulse, uh, if you're doing it once uh, every second, it would take 200 seconds for the motor to rotate all the way around if it's in full step mode or one step per mode, no micro stepping. Um, now, uh, this example, uh, I'll explain the details here. The motor is 200 steps per rev. Stepping is set to 8 micro steps. So it'll take 200 times 8, or 1600 steps to go a full revolution on the motor. Um, the drive itself is the one that's controlling that micro stepping, and that is via dip switches on the side. Uh, other drives, it can be more or less complicated than that. Uh, it's really, uh, it does have a very wide variety of ways of specifying parameters to the drive. So if you're picking a drive, pick one that you read the manual and see if you understand how you're going to uh, make all the settings. It's very important that you understand how to do the micro steps and how to control the current. The other parameter that's very important is the maximum amount of current that the drive can handle, and you need to match that with the motor. The voltage, the higher the voltage, um, the better the performance you get out of the drive and motor combination. Into the code, we're going to import our machine library, as we almost always do, and then we're going to have, uh, from the time library, I'm going to import sleep microseconds. Uh, we're going to create a couple of out pins. Uh, we're going to use the LED on the Pico to flash on and off. Unfortunately, it really kind of happens so fast you don't get to see it. Um, we're going to have a pin that will work as the pulse, and we'll have a pin uh, that will work as the direction selector, uh, forward and reverse, depending on whether it's uh, plus or minus. I've got a very simple function here um, that makes a step, and uh, the purpose of this is so that it can generate a pulse to send to the uh, drive, which will then make the motor move uh, the appropriate rotational distance. Uh, so it's going to be, uh, we will set the set step pin high, we will sleep for three microseconds, very, very short time, and then we'll set the pin to low, and then we'll toggle that LED. And uh, this is actually, um, you wouldn't normally use this uh, kind of an indicator in a performance rated program because this slows down that pulsing uh, substantially. It can have a, a very negative effect on the maximum speed your motor can go. Uh, we're going to set a couple of little things here. Uh, we're going to set the direction to uh, uh, low uh, or zero. And uh, that'll probably run reverse, depending on how I got the motor wired. We're going to sleep for five microseconds before I do anything after changing direction. And that's a requirement by the drive manufacturer. Uh, we're uh, going to set a counter here to uh, zero. We're going to run, uh, or print the statement, start run, and that way I'll know that the program is running. And then I'm just going to make 1,600 steps for one revolution. 
And if you remember, that was uh, explained up here. So once this loop starts, we're going to increment the step counter. We will make a step using our function. We'll sleep for 500 microseconds, and then uh, we'll print the step counter down here on the console. So let's go ahead and run it. I'm going to turn on the power supply, and we will run one revolution. I'll do that again. And that is running a step motor, stepper motor, with step and direction outputs at one eighth inch micro stepping. And it's uh, kind of going along at a nice uh, pace there. We can slow it down even more by increasing uh, the delay time. So if I go to 1000 microseconds or one millisecond, and you'll notice the sound is very different. Now I'll go up to 250, or a, 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 a delay of 250 microseconds, and it'll run faster. And we'll run it again, and you hear the sound difference. That uh, is really uh, quite simply how you control a stepper motor with a step and direction uh, uh, driver such as we've got here. Now, um, one of the problems with using a delay, a dwell between steps, uh, this one here is just the duration of the pulse time, but this one here is the one that controls the speed, is it's inverse, the number value is inverse to what you want. You give it a smaller number of dwell to go faster. And people wrestle with that in your programs. Uh, you got enough other things to worry about with motion control uh, rather than inverting numbers in your head as you're going through your program. So we're going to take a look at yet another way to control it or to uh, operate a step and direction driver. In this example, we're going to be uh, controlling the stepper motor uh, using, of course, the step and direction drive, but instead of specifying or controlling velocity with a dwell, uh, we're going to specify what RPM we want the motor to run at. And that's a little more natural for motor control. Uh, motor uh, is still a 200 step motor, 200 steps per rev at 8 micro steps, so 1600 steps per revolution. Uh, and it's important to understand that uh, for uh, calculating distance and velocity, etc. Uh, we're going to add another import, a time function called ticks in um, milliseconds. Uh, that's going to be uh, just a tool I'm going to use to uh, demonstrate uh, feed over time. Now, this isn't the most accurate system. Uh, but you'll get an idea what we're shooting for uh, with uh, this process. Uh, our signals are the same, our input and outputs. We're going to use a variable called steps per rev to hold the actual number of steps per revolution. And then we're going to add in a calibration factor uh, to help us get the uh, time performance a little bit better. We still have our exact same function for making a step, and then we've added a new function uh, that will calculate uh, the dwell time to achieve the desired RPM, which is a, a function or a factor of our steps per second. So the first of conversion is we're going to uh, convert our RPM to revolutions per second so we can get down to a workable unit. Then we're going to take our, get our steps per second by dividing the steps per rev times the revolutions per second. Finally, we'll get our dwell by taking one divided by the steps per second and then multiplying that uh, by one million to get it into microsecond units. Finally, we're going to round that over so that we have an integer value to work with. 
Uh, and we're also going to add in a calibration factor so that if we tell it to run for one minute, it runs for very close to one minute. And that function returns the dwell time in microseconds. We'll set our direction pin and our sleep time. Uh, we'll make a little nap there so that the uh, driver can actually change directions. We're going to set up a couple of counter, one for steps. Uh, we're going to also uh, specify what RPM I want the motor to run at with this line, and then the number of rotations to run at. Uh, the dwell uh, is uh, created here using our function we did above, and I'm going to print out that factor, that dwell time. Uh, we're going to have a counter for tracking the number of revolutions made. Uh, we will start a counter, uh, a millisecond counter, at ticks uh, millisecond. And this is so I can time out the, uh, the whole routine to see how long it actually takes to perform this uh, operation. And then we're going to print start and then go into our loop. Now, this area here, there's a lot of debugging code in here and additional calculations that I'm hoping the microphone will pick up on the, on the delays caused by these. And then that will be an indicator of the importance of writing clean, efficient code with no extra stuff after you get done with your debugging, of course. Uh, so we're going to go into our so-called endless loop. We will make a step using the same function as before. We'll increment that counter. And then we're going to sleep for our dwell. And that's how we're controlling our speed, this dwell right here. Now we're going to take into account uh, if we've gone a full revolution, and then from there we can calculate the number of revolutions um, that we wanted to go, in this case, 60 of them. So if the steps uh, uh, that have been counted up is greater than or equal to the steps per rev, then we've made a full revolution. We'll increment that counter and print that out. We'll reset the steps counter back to zero so it can count another revolution. Uh, then it's going to make a test if the revolutions is greater than uh, greater than or equal to the total number of revolutions to make, we will end it or we'll record the ending time in milliseconds, we'll print that out, and then we're going to break from the endless loop, and uh, then we'll make our calculation for the total runtime, and then print that down below here, which we can see on this example where I just ran it. Now this is going to go a little bit quicker uh, than before, and the runtime is a little bit longer, so just kind of hang on tight. Uh, once I get, get it going here, I'll probably fast forward it in post editing. Now you hear that knocking on every revolution. You'll hear uh, the motor jerk because there is no acceleration or deceleration. That should be factored, factored into your programs. You will have to control that. Uh, in this case, I'm just going full speed or up to speed and then running at speed and stopping with no acceleration, deceleration. So you hear the motor knock pretty loud for that. Plus, on every revolution, you'll hear kind of a clicking or a knocking sound if you listen carefully. Okay, um, with that, uh, that kind of uh, brings to the surface, excuse me a minute, I'm going to turn off the power supply, uh, that brings to the surface um, the importance of having very clean, concise code so that you're getting a very consistent pulse stream uh, without variations in it. If you have variations in your pulse stream, the stepper motor can get into a... a uh, an area where it, it won't function properly and it'll start skipping steps or it'll completely stop stepping and just buzz. Uh, I call it, uh, it's spazzing out, but um, you want to watch for that and you want to watch to make sure that after you're debugging, you get out, get out of your loop 
all the uh, needless stuff that can cause delays, such as print statements, uh, time calculations for self-timing, etc. Now to test the uh, runtime, uh, I'm going to run it at 60 RPM for 60 rotations. So in its essence, this should run for one full minute, uh, much slower than it was a moment ago. Again, I'll, I'll fast forward through this in post-production so we're not uh, wasting a lot of time. <laughs> Even at that slow speed, I can hear the, the knocking for each revolution. And that... Uh, should have taken 60 seconds. It took 59 seconds, 59.98 seconds. So our little fudge factor up there for our calibration helped over the long run, but it is not helping in the short run. Short run, and a lot of that has to do with all these extra commands in here. Now, before we go on to cleaning this up a little bit, uh, I want to give you a, a little more walkthrough on what you might want to watch for on one of your projects. Now, before we run our next little test, I just wanted to take a quick walk through uh, the data sheet for this particular driver. Now, generally, data sheets are a lot more detailed and clear, uh, but uh, this one is typical of what you might get out of some of the lower priced items on Amazon and so forth. Uh, the important things here is it's uh, output current, uh, 0.9 to 3 amps, 3 amps maximum. Uh, supply voltage has to be a minimum of 20 up to 40. Typical where they want you running is about 36. Uh, signal current is in the milliamps. Uh, your pulse input frequency, that will control the overall speed that the drive is capable of, and that's at 100 kilohertz. Uh, isolation resistance, etc. A lot of that uh, is beyond us. Uh, usually there will be a uh, a uh, description of all the pins. Uh, in this case, they actually do a fairly nice job of explaining how to hook them up and, and what they mean. Uh, your power uh, input, and then, of course, the motor phases, A, A plus, A minus, B plus, B minus. That's a very typical way to describe the uh, wires for a bipolar stepper motor. And then the dip switch settings for how to set your micro-stepping, and then your current output. And then they even try to come up with a nice schematic uh, to help guide you. Uh, this one actually worked out pretty good, uh, and of course I've used it a few times already. Uh, but there are limitations to how fast stepper motors can go. And in this case, 100,000 uh, steps per second uh, is all this drive can handle, uh, but more likely the motor itself will uh, stall out before then. Uh, we're going to go back into our program now, and I want to demonstrate to you um, the speed limitation, the speed limit of your stepper motor and driver combination. Now, you can get more RPM out of a motor by giving it uh, more voltage uh, but you can only go to a certain level before you're just using up uh, so much energy and heat loss that it's no longer effective. Um, in this example here, I'm going to set us to 600 RPM before we were at 500, and we're only going to go for 20 revolutions. I'm going to turn on my power supply, and you should be able to hear it. Unfortunately, the air conditioning is running, so we got a little background noise, but hopefully we can hear it pretty good. Still sounds pretty good, right? Uh, let's try 650 RPM. Okay, and that is what happens when a motor stalls. Stepper motors, uh, when they stall, 
uh, or start missing steps very rapidly, it just vibrates. It can't uh, move fast enough. And that's a combination of many factors. It's a combination of the matching of the motor to the drive, uh, the current that you can provide to the motor, uh, your power supply, the amount of voltage going in, how smooth and consistent your steps are. If you have any knocking noise, like I was explaining, we were getting a click on every revolution. All those can cause the motor to stall. And that's before we even take into account uh, mechanical forces on the motor. So getting that proper balance, regardless of whether you're driving uh, the sequencing way on our old video or using uh, even very high-end step and direction motors, you've really got to watch for stalling. Now, if you're in a very mission-critical application for stepper motors, that's when closed-loop stepper motors become much more advantageous. And I've got a video about those because uh, I just uh, put some on my CNC router uh, about uh, six months ago uh, in late 2022. Uh, and that really was a boost in performance for that machine. So we see that with this combination, 650 RPM is exceeding the capability. The other thing to understand in this, uh, stepper motors are maximum torque at very low speed or zero speed, and the torque decreases the higher the RPM. They have very little power at high RPM, and in this case, if I'm running at even 500 RPM, 150 slower than this, it would probably have very little torque. Now let's take a look at one more uh, program example and see if we can clean up this code a little bit so that the motor would have less chance of stalling out. It won't run any faster, but to get rid of that knocking, now, knocking noise that we were hearing. This is the same program as before, but with a few items stripped out of it. Uh, two, device, or two things that are causing a tremendous drain on time. I'm going to go down to our main loop where our timing is established from one pulse to the next or one step to the next. And you'll notice I commented out the two print statements. Print statements in MicroPython and on microcontrollers is a horrible waste of time uh, when you're in a mission critical or a time critical application. So those are the first two things you'll want to get rid of if you suspect that your uh, pulse stream isn't very good. Now we're running at 500 RPM and I'll drop the duration down to uh, 20 instead of 60 just so this goes a little quicker. Now again we'll want to listen carefully much smoother, right? You don't hear that uh, knocking noise for every rotation of the motor. If we put those back in, they're back. That's how important it is to keep your code clean and concise. Now, this will kind of bring to the end of our discussion on uh, step and direction interfacing with step direction drives for stepper motors. Uh, there's a lot more involved uh, dealing with sizing the right stepper motor for your application. Uh, in truth, sometimes it really comes down to trial and error unless you've got a lot of tools at your hands and a lot of brain power to do the mathematical calculations. Uh, but as we all find in our mechanical applications, there are unforeseen influences that can cause problems. But the general rule is this, oversize your stepper motor more than you think you should uh, so that you get the, the reliability or you go to uh, closed loop stepper motors. So that's a lot of information to cover in this video. I hope you've garnered some information on it that you'll find useful. And should you do so, please like and subscribe and please tell other uh, people uh, about this channel so that we can grow and expand it. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.